In this video, I want to show you how Redux works in combination with React, that is, how you can manage the state of your web application with Redux. Let's look at Redux. So Redux manages the state of your application. Let's have a look at how this happens. Let's go back to, to the big picture, but we will go back to the version where we do not set the state based on user interaction, because we now want to use Redux to manage the state for us. So when we add Redux, we do not want our components to have state. So let's delete this here. And we want Redux to manage our state. And this Basically, all our state will live in the Redux store. So we have a central store where all the state of our web application lives. At least all the client, uh, the, all the state that's necessary on the client side to render the application. And this store basically contains one big tree of JavaScript objects. And then we need to get the state from this store to our components. So we will basically use a function of Redux called connect to um, create a wrapper around our components, which will take the state from the Redux store um, and actually it will only take the state that is relevant for this component and it will map this part of the state to the props of the component. So right now we again don't know how to change the state, how to implement the way back, but what we basically have is a store that contains um, the complete state of our application and then we have a way to connect the state in this store to the props of a component and then React will find out, oh, this the props of this component have changed, so it will call render again. And all this, um, all this mapping from um, the props to the rendered component will happen automatically again. So React will call render and um, render the components to the browser. Let's look at some code. So first we have to create the store. We will input, import create store from Redux and, and to create the store we need a reducer and we can add some initial state. Later we will see a better way to define the initial state, but for now we define the initial state in the same place where we define the store. And we need a reducer. Um, let's just assume for now that we can import this reducer from a file that we wrote ourselves. And as I've said, this store, this Redux store we created here with create store is the only place where all the state of our application will live. And then we want to create wrappers around our pure components and those wrappers are responsible for getting the state out of the store and mapping, mapping it to the properties of the components. We also need a reducer for the store. Actually, this reducer will later contain all the logic we need for changing the state. But for now, for this simple picture where we only have a store and we want to render the contents, we can leave the reducer empty. But the, even an empty reducer has to return a state. So we implement the reducer for now as just it gets a state and something else, an action, and for now, it just returns the state. And then we also have to provide this store 
to our re React components. So here's our app component and some other components in there, or especially there, the wrappers of those components will need the store. So we have to wrap our app component into a provider. And this provider provides the store we just created with React, uh, with Create Store to all the components in our app. As I've said, um, we will create wrappers for our pure components and those wrappers will be responsible for getting values out of the store and um, this concept comes, um, there, there's a, a more abstract concept here which is um, presentational components uh, versus container components. The idea here is that our wrappers will be container components and our pure components will be presentational components. So a presentational component knows how to render things. But it does not know how to get its data to render things. So basically a presentational component gets all the data it needs to render via its props and it just knows how to render the data from the props. But somebody else has to provide the data. These components are completely stateless. They get all the information required for rendering from their props and they can contain other presentational components and they even can contain container components. A container component, on the other hand, does not know how to render things, but it knows where to get the data. So it knows how to get the state from the global state the, it knows how to get the relevant state for the component and it knows how to pass, how to map this global state to the props of the presentational component. And in our case, all these container components we create um, as wrappers for, for Redux will contain a single presentational component and nothing else. And in the code it looks like that. We, we import connect from React Redux and we will use this connect function to create our container component. We have already implemented a presentational component called foo, which knows how to render stuff based on its properties and we want to create a foo container for this presentational component which will map some, some parts of the global state to the properties of the foo component so that the foo component can render this part of the global state. And for this we need a function map state to properties or map state to props if you prefer and we define this function here this function gets a state and knows how to get some relevant part out of the state and map it to the props of our foo component so we basically return the whole props object of the foo component here And that's it. With this map state to props function and the connect function from React Redux, we can create the container component for this presentational component. Also, please note that the connect, fu connect function is a function that returns a function. So it gets some parameters and then it returns a function and we have to call the returned function with our presentational component. With Redux, it's again the same as with React before. Everything here goes automatically. So from the store to the render representation goes automatically. But we have to implement the way back. And 
this looks kind of similar as before but we have to do a bit more so we have a, we get the DOM event because the user did something and in this case we somehow have to update the Redux store and we do this using our reducer so so basically our reducer will update the redux store the reducer um, needs the current state and an action to produce the next state so we somehow need an action so the reducer can compute the new state and we pass this action into the reducer so how do we get from the DOM event to this action object we write an action creator which is basically a simple function which gets some parameters and creates an action object for us so our DOM event handler will call the action creator the action creator will create an action object which is a plain JavaScript object and Redux will make sure to dispatch this action object to the store and when we dispatch it the reducer will get the current state and this action object and our reducer is responsible for creating the next state from the current state and this action object so as I've said the action creator is just a function for um, the connect function that we already know from before we need an object called action creators which contains all the action creators so here's our action creators object and this object contains multiple functions in this case it only contains one function and this function is called action name and this function will create uh, an action object it gets some parameters and it returns an action object that we can pass to the Redux store an action object always has to have a type property and this must be some unique constant like a string constant or a symbol and then it can have some other payload like other properties because the action object has to contain all the data the reducer needs to compute the next state and yeah we use these action creators in our um, connect function when we can create the container component and then we can use those action creators in our DOM events so here we have an action creator called some action and we use this one directly as the callback in the on click event of our button now this action creator returns a simple plain java object which has to have a type in here um, but actually it returns a simple javascript object but redux and especially the connect function will make sure that when we call this function in the onclick handler that it actually dispatches this action object to the store And now we can implement our reduce, reducer. The reducer gets the current state 
and an action object that we have created with an action creator. We've seen that before. And it has to decide what to do with this action. So the first thing in a reducer is typically um, switch on action.type. We know that every action object has a type and we have to decide based on the type what to do with it. Should we ignore the action? Should we return the current state? That's basically ignoring the action means returning the current state. Or if we are interested in the action, like here in some action, we return a new state. The important thing here is that the reducer should always return a completely new state object. So it should not modify the current state. It really should compute a completely new state object from the current state and the action. There is one helper method or one helper function you can use um, to shallowly merge objects and that's object.assign and that should actually read object.assign. Object object.assign takes two or three parameters a new object or the, op the, the target of the assignment. We use the empty object here and then some objects that it should merge. So we want to merge the current state with some other object. And object.assign by default only does a shallow merge. So it will, if some property is already existing in the state, it will completely replace the value of some property that already exists with the new value we, this, uh, we defined here. And I think we need colons here, not equal signs. So we have to implement deep merging ourselves, and that's what I did here with other property. So I say other property is an array and it contains all the values from state.other property. So I use the spread operator here and say it contains all the values of the current state plus the new values one, two, three. And that's how I implemented deep merging myself. This short instructional video is part of my two-day React Redux training course. I sell it online for only 29 euros. So basically, for the price of a textbook, you get 24 instructional videos that teach you everything you need to know to build great web apps with React and Redux. You get 12 labs where you can practice what you've learned. You get 18 screencasts that will help you with the labs. And you get checklists and other training materials like all the presentations I show and written notes of what I've said during the videos. So. Get it now at quickglance.at slash react. Thank you.